All right, time for lecture number two on the geology of gem deposits. Last class, we were going into the primary and secondary occurrences. We made a lot of drawings last in the last lecture. We're going to make many fewer drawings today. Instead, I'm going to show you a lot more pictures. Um, we're going today into Roman numeral two, which is actually the recovery and mining of gem deposits. This is ultimately an economic question because we have to make profit. So this is mining of gem deposits. And we're going to look at pictures and show, kind of consider the state of the art and then the state of all time, right? What people have done historically. It's this, so we're going to put here, we're going to put it's an economic question where well, it's not a question mark, but it is an economic question, where it is all about labor, it's about processing, processing, it's about impact, like environmental impact kind of things, it's about transport, These all these factors are going to come in, and then ultimately how much can you sell the gem for? Sales. These are the type of economic questions I have to worry about with mining gem deposits. And so there ends up being a couple different ways that end up being economically viable. And the first style is called open pit mining. In this situation, we're not digging a tunnel underground, but instead we're removing the overburden. In fact, let's go ahead and put that here. Let's just kind of go here. We're going to go, we remove overburden with a shovel or a backhoe and equipment. Overburden means stuff like the soil, gravel, sand, stuff that we don't care about. That covers the deposit. The deposit that we care about, right? The gem deposit. Sometimes they, they do this, so it can be, we're gonna just say here, heavy machinery to shovels. Oftentimes, there's also a lot of dynamite involved where we're blasting the walls of these open pits. And then in the end, what we do is we remove the ore for processing. It's not that um, complicated of a concept. There ends up being some beautiful pictures I can show you of this process. So here's one of like one of the biggest mines in the world. And I've picked this one because it really shows scale. That's a city. This is in Russia in a place called Murny, where they're mining diamonds from this hole in the ground. It's a humongous hole, and it, that's why it's called an open pit. They loosen all the material and they bring it up to the Earth's surface in humongous trucks, like this one here. Look at the size of that compared to those people. Of course, it doesn't have to be done at that grand scale. Sometimes open pit mining is done by artisanal miners in a much smaller scale, where people are digging holes with shovels and pickaxes. You can see here, they're filling bags of material, which then they're carrying out manually. You can see this guy down on the ground. Okay, That is the... A, in this case, what do we see here is we're having open pit mining of both this in this case this one's primary so this one up here we're oh i gotta go click this so in this case we're doing a primary deposit because we are following a diamond deposit down into the ground okay but it doesn't have to just be primary here the miners in africa are actually working through secondary deposits and so in this case we're going to go uh, we'll go in this case they're doing a secondary mining And so what they're doing is they're sifting through gravels, sifting, we're going to put sifting through gravels, following rivers and paleo channels. All right, that vocabulary word from last class. The other way to do mining, let's make sure what number that one was. That one was A. So the other one is going to be, you're going to guess it, B is going to be underground mining. Underground mining. 
Oh, that's how you spell that. Mining. And with underground mining, what we're doing is we're tunneling underground to reach a primary or secondary gem deposit. If you think about just upfront costs, what's going to cost more, underground or open pit? It ends up being that underground mining costs a huge amount more. And it's also far more dangerous. So we're going to put here, we're going to say more costly and more dangerous. And so the deposit you are going after had better be lucrative for other in other ways. Let me show you a couple pictures of underground mining. Here's probably the simplest scale. You can kind of imagine how this one is more dangerous. Not more costly, right? Because this is just an artisanal miner who has dug a pit in soil trying to reach a sapphire bearing gravel in Sri Lanka. We've got a stick of bamboo that his partner is pulling a bucket up towards the earth's surface. You can imagine what might happen if the walls slump in or the rains come and someone gets trapped down there. This happens in mining every year with underground mining. But this is one way that we extract. In fact, a lot of the world's sapphires come from this kind of operation. At the more grand scale, let me take you to the Argyle mine where diamonds are mined in South Africa. You can see the infrastructure here is incredibly expensive, where the tunnels are humongous. There's a truck way back there for scale. People are pumping electricity and water down in there in order to make a very sophisticated operation. So both open pit and underground tunneling can be rustic or sophisticated. And it's going to depend on the country you're in and the how much money your company has. In the United States, we tend to be here. All right, so sophisticated, that's us in the developed world. Also sophisticated is usually diamond mining because big corporations like De Beers are willing to pour a huge amount of money in to make very sophisticated mines. Whereas rustic mining occurs mostly in the third world, right? Africa and Asia. And then also rustic mining tends to be done by smaller operations. So um, well, I guess that's obvious, right? And they are going after colored stones. In fact, emerald is essentially the only colored stone that is mined with sophisticated techniques. Rubies and sapphires and opals, these are all done in a rustic way. All right, so then last thing for today, maybe this is a short one, who knows, maybe I'll ramble on a little bit too much at the end, is going to be C, and this is gemstone um, mining gem deposits. Well, one of the big parts of mining gem deposits is the recovery. How do we actually get the stones from the ore? So we're going to call it recovery of gems, gems from ore. And this is done with the following steps. First thing you got to do is you got to crush it. The se second thing you do is you wash it. They actually use the word scrub a lot in this community. You scrub the crushed ore with water to clean it all off so you can know what you're looking at. Step three uh, do we have to? I'm going to fit it in right here. The third step is you sieve it all. You sieve with these screens to separate by size. And then the fourth step, the last step then, is a, uh, a density separation where we're going to use the, what is it called? Can you think what it is? The initials are S and G. The specific gravity, right? So like corundum has a specific gravity of 4.02 grams per centimeter cubed, whereas quartz is 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. And you can use that excess density, which we call specific gravity. Do I need to write that for you? Probably I can. Specific gravity to separate the chaff, right? Crappy quartz from the wheat, right? The money making sapphire. Well, and I guess there's one step after that. What we what people end up doing is you got to have this man tested, I guess. And so you just do a final quality check. So you're going to do a quality check by hand. 
just to make sure things are truly separated. What does this look like in terms of pictures? Well, let me show you. Here, here we could have one of the first parts. This is these are pictures all from a place in I think this is um, this is in Montana. Whoop, that's not the right button. Here's the right button. So these are this is all from a GIA article about the potentate mining in Montana, which would be a fascinating place to go if you ever want to go on a field trip with your family or friends. You can go sapphire mine. But what ends up happening here is we're pulling the ore out of the ground with this uh, cat, what is this caterpillar, what is it called, the backhoe? And it is taking the gravel, pouring into the separator, which is starting to separate things out by size. And you can see the fine grain stuff here versus the coarser grain stuff here. Next step in the processing would be to take it to a processing plant where the processing plant is going to run water. Oh, gotta go back to this button. We're gonna run water across the sapphires, right? Here's our water. And as we're running the water, we're both scrubbing and also density separating. So we're kind of doing two of those at one single time. And at the artisanal level, this is what the scrubbing and the density separation look like, right? Where they're gonna take a gold pan and it's not always called a gold pan. In this case, it's a diamond pan, I guess. But they're swashing the gravels around with water, cleaning, right? You can get see how clean stuff's getting here, but then also moving the heavies to the middle. So oftentimes, we might make a note to ourselves here that the H2O scrubbing and density occur, uh, let me, I need to get better handwriting on this thing, simultaneous. And then finally, the last step is that hand check. Everybody's doing these hand checks. Whoop, making this a little bigger. We can make that a little bigger here. Where here, the miner has taken a product, here's a bunch of the product, put it on a light table, and is now sorting the gems, which are probably like, I don't know, 50 to 90% separated. And just taking the goods and separating it from the bads, or and then like maybe the really goods are going in the cup. All right, so this is the process of mining. We've got to separate the stuff that we pull out of the ground, and when we are doing pulling stuff out of the ground, remember it's by underground, or it's by these incredibly deep open pit kind of operations. Well, that's the end of this lecture. Geology of gem deposits is done. Next lesson, we're going to start going through all the individual gemstones. See you then.